Number 10. The Wedge of Ayud The aluminum wedge of Ayud is either a mysterious piece of early technology that doesn't make any sense to anyone, or something left behind by aliens. It's definitely controversial ever since it was discovered in 1973 in Romania on the muddy bank of the Mers River. Some reports claim that the object was discovered under a pile of sand, alongside a collection of mastodon bones. What makes this object so curious is the simple fact that it's crafted from aluminum and was found near fossils that date back around 10,000 years. As you might already know, humans didn't make aluminum until the 1800s, and so the object is quite the anomaly. And while you might be thinking that somebody could have just dropped the artifact in the sand by accident and it got buried, other reports have claimed that it has a thick layer of oxide on it that dates back 400 years. Even the Archaeological Institute of Cluj-Napoca allegedly confirmed the artifact's age. However, there is no current information on what techniques they used to date the artifact. Additionally, there is no information on what the artifact could have been used for. It looks like a simple wedge. It has no immediate use that's recognizable. And after 1995, the wedge vanished. It had been on display at a local museum in Romania, but one day it was simply gone, and nobody currently knows where it is. There are definitely pictures that confirms its existence, but where it's gone is a total mystery. Number 9. Greek Fire Greek fire was the medieval equivalent to the flamethrower. It was an incendiary weapon first utilized in warfare back in 678 AD. What makes this such a remarkable technology is that all these years later, nobody has been able to replicate the formula that the Greeks used to create the highly flammable liquid known as Greek fire. Greek fire was no ordinary weapon. This stuff was so strong that it could be catapulted at the enemy in the form of incendiary bombs, it could be sprayed under pressure like a flamethrower to destroy enemy ships from a distance, and it could even light the surface of the water on fire to create huge walls of flames that crippled enemy warships. It has been claimed that Greek fire was the most devastating weapon on Earth for 700 years keeping the ancient city of Constantinople liberated from all those who would attack. Greek fire was such a pivotal weapon in the arsenal of the ancient Greeks that its recipe never fell into foreign hands, and eventually, it just kind of faded away into the history books. But there are definitely true accounts of the fire being used. In a 12th century illuminated manuscript, there are ancient illustrations of a battle in the 1820s in which a giant flamethrower-like weapon was used to destroy the ships of Thomas the Slav. And the 6th century historian Theophanes even wrote that Greek fire caused enemies to shiver in terror. Have you ever witnessed someone use a flamethrower? Was it terrifying? Did they burn anything? Tell me about it in the comments below. Then remember to subscribe to Taltanic for more exciting videos just like this one. Number 8. Damascus Steel Damascus Steel is the most legendary type of metal ever crafted by human hands. It is still recognizable today by the distinct wavy light and dark patterns seen on its surface. Damascus Steel is beautiful, and it was highly valued hundreds of years ago because of its extremely sharp edge, its rigid strength, and its shocking flexibility. Any weapon crafted out of Damascus steel was seen as far superior to all else. And despite all the technology we have today, scientists still have been unable to replicate or surpass the sheer quality of ancient Damascus steel. This is something scientists simply can't do. They can get to the moon, and they can build a nuclear bomb, but they can't create a sword better than a Damascus steel sword. One of the reasons that scientists are failing in their attempts is that Damascus steel was cast from a special type of steel, which was originally made in India at least 2,000 years ago. The Indians perfected the method, and Damascus steel became hugely popular in the 3rd and 4th centuries. It actually got its name because much of the steel was traded to the ancient city of Damascus, in what is today Syria. But by the 1700s, the source material for Damascus steel was completely lost to history. 
Since then, not a single new Damascus steel tool or weapon has been cast, making this arguably the most precious metal on the planet. Number 7. The Antikythera Mechanism The Antikythera Mechanism is often hailed as the world's first ever computer. But despite all the praise this thing gets, scientists don't really know what it is, what it was used for, or where it even came from. The best that anyone can come up with is that the device replicated the motions of the heavens. By just holding this mechanism in your hands, you could track the route taken by the sun, the moon, and the planets in the solar system with startling accuracy. That's why this is often referred to as an ancient Greek computer. In 2006, Mike Edmonds from the Cardiff University in Wales used CT scans to reveal that the mechanism has tiny inner workings and hidden inscriptions that nobody had ever seen before, sparking new controversy and a new wave of scholarly research that, to this day, has left scientists scratching their heads, wondering how exactly the mechanism worked as the first computer in the world. To give you an example of how complicated this thing is, there have been at least 82 different pieces of the mechanism found so far. It was sitting at the bottom of the ocean for 2,000 years inside the Antikythera shipwreck. Then, in the early 1900s, divers began pulling up pieces of Greek shipwreck and the mechanism. It's now sitting at the National Archaeological Museum in Athens, where you can get a first-hand look at this incredibly mysterious piece of ancient tech. Number 6. The Iron Ashoka Pillar of Delhi the Iron Ashoka Pillar of Delhi, located of course in New Delhi, India, seems to be rust-proof. It doesn't look like much from the outside. The Iron Pillar is only about 22 feet, it's sitting in an empty square, and there's really not much to look at unless you know what you're looking for. This pillar is actually 1,600 years old and made almost entirely of iron. If you know anything about iron sitting out in the sun for 1,600 years, you should know that this strange pillar should have become a pile of dust many years ago. It's the pillar's striking resistance to time that has labeled it an out-of-place artifact, meaning some experts claim that whatever technology was used to craft the Iron Ashoka Pillar of Delhi was futuristic for its time, and maybe even influenced by aliens. Some claims say that the pillar was crafted with 99.9% .9 iron purity, alluding to the idea that the technology used to craft the pillar is now lost and can never be replicated again. But the truth is that the pillar is only 98% pure, and though it was certainly an amazing feat of engineering for the designers all those years ago, they likely did it all themselves using highly advanced mathematics and building techniques, with no help from aliens. Number 5. The Baghdad Battery the Baghdad Battery is about 2,000 years old, coming from the ancient Parthian period, which lasted from between 250 BC to 250 AD. The exact science behind the Baghdad Battery is simple enough. It was a jar made out of clay with a stopper of asphalt and an iron rod stuck through a copper cylinder. When the jar was filled with vinegar or another type of electrolytic solution, it turned into a literal battery able to produce roughly 1.1 volts. But while the science behind the ancient battery is easily explainable, its existence is not. What's really crazy is that the Baghdad battery was invented significantly earlier than any other battery was. And so far as we know, there have been no written records discovered that detail the functions of the jar. As for what a battery could have possibly been used for 2,000 years ago, the best thing scientists can come up with is that the batteries were used to make electroplate items, which is essentially the practice of placing a layer of something like gold onto the surface of a different layer, something like silver. This method of electroplating is still practiced in modern Iraq today, where the original Baghdad battery was found though we definitely don't know if that's what this ancient relic was used for. Number 4. The Ulfbert Sword The Ulfbert Sword is one of the most mysterious weapons ever discovered. This fascinating blade was crafted by the Vikings about a thousand years ago, and there have been about 170 of them found so far by archaeologists. 
But what's really shocking and unbelievable about these Viking weapons is that they were forged using technology that wasn't available for another 800 years after the Viking era had already ended. Scientists to this day have no idea what the secret to the legendary Ulfbert sword is. In order to forge this kind of weapon, researchers have said that the Vikings would have needed a forge that could heat up to 3,000 degrees, which was not possible in human society until the Industrial Revolution of the 1800s and 1900s. So, how did they do it? Well, the truth is that nobody knows. The secret of these remarkably made weapons is even more confounding than the secrets of Damascus steel. And what makes the Ulfbert sword even more legendary is that it was only carried by the finest warriors of the time. And it was actually referred to as the ultimate weapon. Number three, Zheng Hang's seismoscope. Zheng Hang worked as a Chinese scientist and expert mathematician back in the Han Dynasty. During his life, he crafted one of the most advanced pieces of scientific technology in the ancient Chinese world. This guy managed to put together a seismoscope to detect earthquakes, way before we had the Richter scale. He invented the first seismoscope back in 132 AD. His machine was so sensitive that he could indicate the exact direction an earthquake was coming from at least 100 miles away. And what makes this achievement even greater is that back in those days, even the inventor of the seismoscope himself believed that earthquakes had nothing to do with the Earth itself and were actually caused by wind and air movements. It was generally agreed in the Chinese culture that earthquakes happened because of some kind of disturbance between yin and yang meaning that the heavens were displeased with whatever the current dynasty was doing. In any case, scientists are shocked that this guy created such a usable machine. Plus, nobody in modern science has been able to create an exact replica that reaches the same level of accuracy as Zhang Heng's seismoscope. Plus, the seismoscope is really cool. The device itself is a large jar with dragons clinging to its sides and toads sitting underneath the dragons. While its inner workings are a bit complicated? When an earthquake hits, a bronze ball will fall from one of the eight dragon's heads into the mouth of the corresponding toad beneath it. That indicates which direction the earthquake is coming from. Number two, Roman concrete. Roman concrete outlasts modern concrete by thousands of years. We use modern concrete to build everything in our society. And yet, our modern concrete is known to start breaking down after as few as 50 years. On the flip side, even 1,000 years after the Roman Empire disintegrated, their concrete structures have not. And for a long time, scientists have been wondering why the ancient Romans could make such reliable concrete when modern humans could not. And as it turns out, there may have been a special ingredient that made Roman concrete grow stronger over time rather than weaker. According to a new report from Science Magazine, a recipe for mortar written by a Roman engineer named Marcus Vitruvius in the year 30 BC detailed ingredients such as volcanic ash, seawater, lime, and a mixture of volcanic rock and wooden molds to be immersed in even more seawater. Apparently, seawater may have had something to do with the unbelievable strength of Roman concrete. That seems like something modern scientists definitely should have figured out a little sooner. After taking a core sample from a Roman building near Naples in Italy, scientists found that the seawater had actually dissolved some of the components of the volcanic ash, thereby creating additional binding minerals. A hydrothermal mineral formed inside the concrete that made it stronger as it got older. Basically, Roman ingenuity truly was the best. And it's a little strange that modern companies are still not using the old Roman formula for mixing their own concrete. Number 1. The Wrinkled Stone The wrinkled stone may look like a piece of advanced technology in which a stone was folded in such a way to fit into another piece of stone just like a jigsaw puzzle. But it's not. The scary truth about this wrinkled stone is that it's actually modern and was crafted by a Spanish sculptor named Jose Manuel Castro Lopez who has been experimenting with hand sculptures carved skillfully from granite and quartz. 
He makes ordinary stone appear as though it's wrinkled, soft, and squishy. Jose even says that he thinks of himself more as a druid than a sculptor, trying to connect with each and every stone that he molds to breathe his own life into it. But here's why this is so fascinating. Jose has mastered the art of making stones look otherworldly, and he has done this simply by sculpting them. He's even made rocks look like they bleed and crafted other amazing illusions. It's not a far stretch to say that 2,000 years ago or more, somebody else with a chisel, a rock, and a bit of imagination could do the exact same thing. Which of these inventions did you find the most impressive? Number 10, Grenade Selfie. In one of the most dramatic cases of a selfie gone horribly wrong, a man named Alexander Chekik was recently killed after trying to pose for an unbelievable photo with a live hand grenade. The incident went down in the city of Labinsk, where Alexander pulled the pin out of a live grenade, snapped a selfie, and then sent it to a friend. Before Alexander sent the picture, he was texting his buddy, and this buddy pleaded with him to not mess with the explosive, but his pleas were ignored. The concerned friend replied back to the selfie picture asking if Alexander was okay, but that was the end of the conversation. The grenade exploded, killing Alexander immediately after he couldn't manage to get the pin back into the grenade. According to local Russian news sources, the explosion was so powerful that it literally broke the man in half. Of course, Alexander probably thought that the grenade wouldn't explode as long as he held it tight in his hands. But that wasn't really the case. He blew up and never took another selfie again. Number 9. The Video Game Binge During a school holiday in Thailand, a 17-year-old boy named Piowat Harikun decided he would spend the entire time off playing video games on his computer. In a bizarre twist of fate, those video games were what killed him. The boy's father found him slumped dead in his chair early in the morning. He tried to revive him, but it was too late. Medics later confirmed that the teen had died from a stroke brought on by playing computer games throughout the entire night. It's not exactly clear how this could have possibly happened, whether it was stress, exhaustion, or whatever, but the team likely wasn't in the best shape from living such a sedentary life. Harakun apparently had quite an obsession with gaming. The teen would draw the curtains during the day to sit in the dark and play, and at night, he refused to sleep. And even though the kid was great in school, the addiction had him firmly in its hold and wouldn't let him go. Harukun's father said in a later interview that he hopes his son's death can be an example for other parents dealing with teenage game addicts. Number 8. Too Many Energy Drinks In yet another bizarre accident, a man named John Reynolds died after suffering a heart attack because of too many energy drinks. This is something you hear about all the time, but that you normally take as just an urban legend. But this is a real thing that happens. According to News.com, John Reynolds was daily healthy. He didn't smoke, he didn't drink, but he had a serious issue with guzzling energy drinks to stay awake during his night shifts. He worked as a mechanic and almost always drank an energy drink on his way to work. But one morning in February, John's wife woke to witness her husband gasping for breath. She was forced to perform CPR while waiting for the emergency services to arrive. But it was simply too late. John was taken to the hospital, put on life support, and induced into a coma. Weeks later, he was pronounced brain dead. His wife was then forced to turn off his life support machine, permanently ending their relationship of 10 years. Even more heartbreaking is that John had three young boys when he died. But here's what happened. John's sugar levels were too high, and this was all because of the energy drinks. His desire to stay awake by guzzling these liquid heart attacks literally killed him. Does this make you want to never drink another energy drink again? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Number 7. YouTube Prank Gone Wrong A man was shot to death for literally just trying to pull a prank. 
In Tennessee, a 20-year-old man named Timothy Wilkes thought it would be a good idea to make a YouTube prank on a stranger. Timothy and his friends went to the trampoline park at night with butcher knives. He and his friends, whose identity has been withheld, approached a stranger thinking they had a great idea, and they were going to stage a robbery prank for their channel on YouTube. But as they approached the Urban Air Trampoline Park in Tennessee, they soon learned it was not a great idea at all. Everything went horribly wrong. David Starnes Jr. saw the two boys coming at him with butcher knives. He pulled out his gun and he shot Timothy Wilkes in defense. He had assumed that they were literally about to rob him and decided it would be a better idea to shoot in self-defense rather than be stabbed to death. According to Global News, YouTube has actually banned these types of stunts, but that hasn't stopped young kids from going out and trying to do crazy things to get views. In the case of Timothy, his dumb decision cost him his life. Number 6. Fireworks Gone Wrong A man celebrating the 4th of July in Maine ended up dead after trying to launch fireworks from the top of his head. Devin Staples had been having the time of his life, out with his friends and family, having a few drinks, lighting off fireworks, and enjoying the holiday festivities. But that all changed when Devin placed a reloadable fireworks mortar tube on the top of his skull and ignited it. Much to everyone's disbelief and horror, the fireworks killed him instantly. It basically burned a hole right through the top of his skull. The authorities said that when the firework exploded, it caused a fatal head injury, though they would not go into any more gruesome detail than that. Devin's brother told the New York Daily News in a statement that by the time he arrived at the scene, there was no Devin left, meaning he had blown himself up beyond recognition. He also claimed that it was a freak accident and that Devin was always the kind of person who would do something stupid. At this time, unfortunately, Devin's luck ran out. Number 5. Boiled to Death David Allen Kerwan from California was driving through Yellowstone National Park on July 20th, checking out the Fountain Paint Pot thermal area with his friend Ronald and Ronald's dog. They parked their truck around 1 o'clock in the afternoon and went to take a closer look at these stunning natural springs, which by the way can get as hot as 205 degrees Fahrenheit. It was then that the dog escaped the truck, ran up to one of the thermal springs, and being a dog, jumped into the burning pool. The dog literally dove headfirst into the boiling pit of horror, and David, acting on impulse, jumped into the pit after the dog. This was definitely an act of bravery, but nonetheless, it was a stupid decision. David jumped into the burning pool, he swam over to where the dog was, and that was when everything went wrong. He had to let go of the dog, which was likely already dead, and then try to free himself from the scalding pool. His friend tried his best to help him out, sustaining second-degree burns in the process, and David sat down and began muttering to himself. He had been burned so badly that he went blind, he had third-degree burns across 100% of his body, and sadly, he died the next morning at the Salt Lake City Hospital. This guy tried to be a hero and save his buddy's dog, and it ended with him literally boiling himself to death. Number 4. Travel Blogger Mayhem At Yosemite National Park, rangers identified the bodies of two people who fell from Taft Point to their deaths. According to the National Park Service officials, two citizens of India who had been residing in the United States died after tumbling 800 feet, or 244 meters, to their doom. It took a full day for their bodies to be discovered, with park rangers needing to use advanced climbing techniques just to reach the precarious location of the bodies. But here's where the stupidity comes into play. The couple had an Instagram account in which they would post the amazing pictures of their travels all across the United States. A lot of their pictures were beautiful, but also look extremely dangerous, such as the photos where one of them is sitting at the literal edge of the Grand Canyon. These are daredevil photos, and it's highly likely that the couple was trying to get yet another dramatic snapshot when they tumbled to their deaths. Even though the authorities did not confirm this, as no one was there when they fell to see if they were trying to take a dramatic selfie or not, 
it is highly suspect. Number three, train surfing gone wrong. In an outstanding act of stupidity, Andrew Minto from County Durham in the United Kingdom died after climbing onto a train and receiving a 25,000 volt shock of electricity. This happened at Durham Station after the man climbed onto the top of the train, touched the overhead cables, and was zapped so hard that he was thrown backwards onto the track. He suffered from severe burns from the shock, and even though he was taken to the hospital almost immediately, British Transport Police reported that he died soon after. Andrew worked for a marketing team. He had a pretty great life, and he was a valued member of the community. His death was a tragic and yet totally avoidable and dumb mistake. He actually climbed onto the top of the train because somehow his shoe had ended up on the roof. Nobody knows how the shoe got up there, but he really did die just trying to recover a sneaker. Number two, fallen into lava. A man in Hawaii recently died after falling into a lava tube hidden beneath his garden. This wasn't really the man's fault, but it was still a pretty dumb way to die. According to the local police, the unidentified victim was 71 years old when he broke through a soft part of his backyard while trimming the hedges and fell 21 feet or 6.4 meters into the hidden lava tube. He wasn't found until several days later when friends reported him missing. His body was recovered by the Hawaii Fire Department rescue. They rappelled into the lava tube and extracted his body approximately 22 feet or 6.7 meters below the surface of the ground. By the time they got his body pulled out of the hole, he was already long gone. And by now you're probably wondering what exactly a lava tube is? It's basically an underground stream that lava will flow through during an eruption. Lava tubes form over the course of a few different volcanic eruptions, and during future eruptions, the lava will quickly flow down through them, creating a sort of underground passageway. Unfortunately, these hollow tubes are all over the island of Hawaii, just waiting to gobble up unsuspecting gardeners or tourists. Number one, hide and seek to death. In perhaps the most boggling murder mystery of the century, a woman from Florida named Sarah Boone was recently charged with second-degree murder after putting her boyfriend inside of a suitcase and leaving him to die. Imagine suffocating to death inside of a suitcase because of a weird game of hide-and-seek with your girlfriend. That's pretty much what happened here. According to Fox News, Sarah told police that her and her boyfriend, Jorge Torres, were playing hide and seek when he thought it would be a good idea to hide inside the travel bag. They had been drinking at the time, and Sarah claimed that she had fallen asleep. And when she woke up, Jorge was still locked inside of the suitcase, unresponsive and not breathing. However, a seriously disturbing video was found that turned the case upside down. In the video, Jorge can be heard screaming for help while stuck inside the suitcase, and Sarah can be heard responding, that's what I feel like when you cheat on me. It looks like Sarah somehow convinced Jorge to get inside the suitcase, which, stupidly, he did. Then, she let him die as revenge for cheating on her. He even shouted that he couldn't breathe, and Sarah simply waited for him to suffocate. Brutal, savage, and definitely pretty dumb. Thanks for watching. Which one of these absolutely dumb ways people died makes the least sense to you? Number 10, the Bog Burial. Thousands of years before today, the indigenous people who lived in Florida buried their dead inside of peat-bottomed ponds. And as the sea levels rose, the graveyards ended up being submerged and lost beneath the Gulf of Mexico. But in a report from the National Geographic, the Florida Department of State recently announced that they had found an early Native American burial site just off the coast of Minnesota Key. Researchers have already identified the creepy remains of six individuals buried beneath the sand at the bottom of the sea floor but they say that there could be even more. And what makes this discovery even more exciting is that a diver was the one who found the bodies accidentally while searching for prehistoric shark teeth. 
Instead of shark teeth, the diver stumbled upon a jawbone. A team of underwater archaeologists led by Ryan Duggins then got to work exploring the site. And while not all of the bodies have been dug up, more most certainly will. This Native American burial ground is about 7,000 years old and is currently being called a bog burial. These types of burial sites are incredibly rare to find offshore, especially in North America, but it's actually not the first. Back in the 1980s, archaeologists found 168 bog bodies inside of a pond near Cape Canaveral. Number 9. Jason Voorhees Imagine swimming underwater and coming face to face with Jason Voorhees from Friday the 13th. Well, that's exactly what could happen if you decided to go for a dip at a popular diving location in Minnesota. The diving spot is actually inside of an old iron ore pit, and somebody named Doug Klein installed a full-size statue of the famous killer underwater to freak out the local divers. Jason Voorhees can still be found at the diving location to this very day, seemingly waiting for the right time to pick up his machete and start murdering people. And while Jason isn't inside of Crystal Lake, and he hasn't been caught rising from the depths to commit any heinous acts yet, it's still a pretty freaky thing to come across. Nobody wants to meet Jason Voorhees in the real world, and seeing him chained up underwater would probably be enough to make the average person think twice before going diving ever again. Number 8. The Cthulhu Fossil Something very creepy has recently been found by paleontologists in the United Kingdom. It has been dubbed the Cthulhu Fossil, after researchers were shocked to discover the monstrous sea creature fossilized on the sea floor, with long tentacles and an uncanny resemblance to the great alien god written of in H.P. Lovecraft's famous works of fiction specifically in The Call of Cthulhu. Of course, this was not a monster from the stars that came down to poison the minds of all humans. It was actually a sea cucumber, now extinct, that dates back around 430 million years. The paleontologists from the United Kingdom and the USA worked together to create a 3D reconstruction of the beast, and they named it Solacina Cthulhu, in honor of H.P. Lovecraft. Their findings were reported in the Journal of Proceedings of the Royal Society B, in which they detailed the ancient sea cucumber and its behavior. This critter was only about 3 centimeters, 30 millimeters in width. It had tubed feet that it used to capture food and scurry across the ocean floor. And other than that, it was a pretty creepy little animal. What would you do if you found the fossils of a sea monster? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Number 7. Beast of the Deep Divers were pretty excited after they found the amazing remains of a shipwreck under the water. Archaeologists have since labeled the discovery the Beast from the Deep because of how creepy and strange the shipwreck appeared. Though it wasn't the shipwreck itself that was extremely creepy. It was actually the figurehead that was discovered at the front of the 15th century Danish ship, which was just dragged out of the waters near Sweden. The eerie looking figurehead depicts something that looks like a dog, but could also be a legendary monster. The wrecked vessel was once a warship active from sometime between 1481 and 1513 built under the rule of King Hans of Denmark. It was named the Gribschunden. So far as we know from historical records, the ship had been on a diplomatic mission in 1495 when it caught fire and sank to the ocean floor, never returning to its home in Sweden. It comes from a time when Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Its wreckage was actually first discovered in 2015, and it is now considered to be one of the most important historic pieces of naval warfare for the country. Johan Rambi, a professor of marine archaeology interested in the discovery, has said that the researchers are still confused about what the creepy figurehead represents. They can't decide if it's a sea monster a dragon with the ears of a lion and the mouth of a crocodile. And to make things even more bizarre, the figurehead appears to be eating a human being. Number 6. The Mysterious Monolith A creepy and mysterious monolith was recently discovered just a few years ago in the Sicilian Channel. And, to this day, it has scientists seriously perplexed. It's definitely not Atlantis, but the 40-foot or 12-meter monolith just found underwater could be around the same age as the legendary Lost City. It has been estimated to be around 9,000 years old, 
making it dramatically older than almost any other monoliths of such massive proportions found anywhere on Earth. A scientific analysis confirmed that the monolith was actually built from a rock formation no more than a thousand feet, or 305 meters, from where it currently rests at the bottom of the channel. The water levels were roughly 50 meters, or 164 feet, lower than today when the structure was quarried. And if you're saying that this isn't a very creepy discovery, just imagine being the divers who had to go down there in the dark and the murk and behold an ancient stone monument that weighs about 15 tons or 30,000 pounds. It really looks like it belongs in a fantasy horror movie or holding up the gates to hell. Nobody is sure exactly who crafted the monolith, as there are no other man-made features to speak of nearby. But researchers are pretty certain that they have stumbled upon the remnants of perhaps an unknown ancient civilization. For all we know, the bottom of the Sicilian Channel could be riddled with the bodies of the dead. Number 5. 1946 Corsair Plane a 1946 Corsair plane is currently resting at the bottom of the ocean off the coast of Hawaii. This is one of the creepiest aerial wreckages that can be seen today. The entire plane is disintegrating. It's overgrown with coral, and it's teeming with sea life. And while that might seem like something magical, it's actually quite disturbing to witness firsthand. The plane allegedly sank back in 1946 when a training exercise went wrong and the craft ran out of fuel. Even though the pilot bailed and made it to safety, the plane was lost. Now it's a grim relic at the bottom of the sea, submerged by 75 feet or 23 meters of water and possibly even haunted. Number 4. Ram's Head Squid for the first time in history, a creepy squid has just been filmed in the wild. This elusive and rather disgusting monster is known as the ram's horn squid, named after its spiral-shaped internal shell. These shells are often found by people combing the beaches for goodies, but a live one has never actually been recorded on film. It took a remotely operated vehicle investigating the murky depths off the Great Barrier Reef to film a short video of the ram's head squid. The crew found the squid floating vertically at about 2,800 feet or 853 meters below the surface. It looks like a freaky pale eggplant with enormous eyes and gross tentacles coming out of its face. Like a lot of other marine creatures that inhabit a world so deep and almost completely devoid of sunlight, the squid can make its own light. The ram's horn has a bright green photophore on its rear. Before, whenever the creature was pulled in by trolley nets and studied, the mantles would bob up, orienting the ram's horn with its tentacles away facing down. This made sense in terms of buoyancy because the gas-filled shell would float above its body. That pose would point the ram's horn's photophore towards the surface of the water, while other sea creatures usually shine their bioluminescence down towards the seafloor to confuse predators and make it harder for them to notice the squid. It didn't really make sense to researchers that the squid pointed its light skyward, but now that footage has finally been captured, it's been discovered that the ram's horn squid does indeed point its photophore down, and that aspect of behavior that previously puzzled scientists has been cleared up. It's actually the only living member of an extremely unique squid family, and it's so rare that researchers might never catch a glimpse of one again. But that's okay, as marine biologists and squid experts all over the world were thrilled to see this footage for the first time, with Michael Vecchioni from the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History telling Science Alert that he had been looking for a ram's head squid for a long time. Number 3. A Monster's Horn The creepy horn of a monster was recently discovered in an estuary in Britain. It's not every day that ordinary people stumble upon a literal monster horn from an extinct species that roamed the British Isles 5,000 years ago. It all happened when two brothers were taking a stroll and noticed the horn sticking up out of the water. After a bit of digging, they managed to get the horn out of the estuary. And after a lot of phone calls, the horn was handed over to scientists, whose preliminary analysis showed the date of the horn as well as the type of animal it belonged to. Scientists are now saying that this was the horn of a wild adult auroch, an animal which went extinct on the British Isle about 3,500 years ago. According to the Daily Mail, these huge beasts populated Britain during the Neolithic period and were far larger than modern cattle. 
standing at up to 6 feet or 1.8 meters tall. The horn itself weighed nearly 7 pounds, 3 kilograms. Number 2. Alien Skulls in Mythical Mayan Cave In a mystical Mayan cave, underwater archaeologists recently discovered a cache of elongated skulls and curious human bones. They did this within an underwater cavern known as a cenote, known as Sac Oyam in the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. The underwater cavern was made thousands of years ago when the limestone bedrock collapsed and exposed the groundwater beneath. Many of these pits were used by the ancient Maya for sacrificial rituals, but in this case, it's not exactly clear why so many bones were found submerged in this particular cenote. Considering there were at least 10 elongated human skulls discovered, it's unlikely that they were all part of a sacrifice. The bones belonged to men and women, as well as adults and teenagers. According to researchers, many other skulls like this have been found in burials from the same time period, and it's likely that the skulls were flattened intentionally during infancy although we don't know why exactly. Sac Uyam is definitely not like other cenotes, and villagers don't even go near the site, as there is a lot of fear surrounding what lies inside. Local legend says that the cavern is guarded by a mysterious, feathered, horse-headed snake. Residents of the nearby village of Telcachio tell tales of people seeing the serpent slithering around a tree, leaping up, spinning around and then diving into the water, though these are just legends of course. It probably wasn't a monster serpent that dragged these people inside. The pit may have been used as an ordinary cemetery, or those within could even have been victims of a plague, at least according to archaeologist Bradley Russell, who spent two weeks investigating the cenote and its hidden horrors. Number 1. Octopus Feeding Frenzy Researchers working with the Nautilus expedition were recently faced with a nightmare scene while diving off the coast of central California. What, at first, looks like a terrifying sea monster writhing around on the ocean floor is actually a horde of octopuses feasting on the rotting remains of a dead whale. It's hard to really see what's going on in the video that was uploaded by the researchers, but it's definitely unnerving. There are dozens of extremely creepy octopuses crawling across the bones of what appears to be a 15-foot or 4.5-meter whale carcass, literally slurping the skin and meat off its bones and working towards the internal organs. And while this is certainly a pretty disturbing thing to witness, it really is a special look into the ecological process. The eels come and strip the skeleton of its blubber. The octopuses come along to slurp up the scraps, and the bone-eating worms begin to feast on the lipids of the dead animal skeleton. This exact scene is why you never see the remains of pirates in shipwrecks, and why no bodies have ever been recovered from the Titanic. Thanks for watching. Which of these weird discoveries do you think is the creepiest? Let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for all the latest and greatest videos.